Hello, and welcome back to this tutorial series on linkages in PolyBridge 2. Last video covered bracing and guiding arms. If you feel like you need a refresher or missed it, I've included a card and a link in the description. But anyways, on to the linkages. Today we'll be going over 90 degree rotation two ways. Why 90 degrees? Rotating 90 degrees allows us to move the road in predictable ways that can be scaled up and down without needing to do any math. So basically, laziness. Like last time, we will show the derivation of this linkage and then show the tracing tool shortcut that everyone uses. So let's get into the sandbox and load up that custom level. You may remember this demonstration from the last video. This link braces the hydra and keeps it locked onto its path as long as the pivot point is exactly in the middle. We showed that last time it didn't matter how far away from the hydraulic the pivot point was. But did you catch that? Changing where the pivot is changes how much it rotates. Putting it farther away makes it rotate less, and putting it closer makes it rotate more. If we find the right spot, it magically rotates 90 degrees. But why? What makes this 1.41 meter long segment work? Since the pivot is in the middle, the link is effectively being mirrored across a line drawn through the pivot. This means that the angle made between this imaginary line and the link is the same at the start and end of the move. Since the total angle we want to move is 90 degrees, that makes the angle on each side 45 degrees. Drawing a straight line between the start and end point draws a triangular shape. Since the two legs are the same length and we have a 90 degree or right angle in one corner, we have an isosceles right triangle. This makes the other two angles 45 degrees. When we split this triangle in half on the imaginary line, the angles of the small triangle add up to make another isosceles right triangle. As we just saw, this triangle has the property where the two legs are equal length. The leg length is half the distance the hydraulic moves, which happens to be one meter, which means our pivot point has to be one meter away. The length of our link is the hypotenuse of this triangle, and I'll save you the googling and just tell you that the equation to calculate that is just the leg length times the square root of 2. Since our leg length is 1, our hypotenuse is just the square root of 2, which is an irrational number, but Plybridge just rounds that to 1.41 and calls it a day. The less math-heavy way of deriving this geometrically is to start with a shape that looks the same when it's rotated 90 degrees. A circle easily fits this criteria. We'll put a custom shape anchor on this circle to show that it's rotating. But we can only approximate a circle with wood and steel, so we need an easier shape to work with. The simplest shape we can make is a triangle, but when I rotate it, it only looks the same when rotated 120 degrees. The next shape up is a square. This one does look the same when rotated 90 degrees. Let's add a pivot to the middle so we have a place to rotate from. Now that we have this square, we can better visualize what's happening. When we rotate at 90 degrees, this point ends up exactly where this point used to be. If we push on one corner, with a hydraulic instead, as long as the hydraulic is long enough to reach the other corner, it will rotate 90 degrees before it tears itself apart. We can resize our hydraulic to fix this by measuring the distance between the start and end point with some rope. Hmm, one meter. We could use a hydraulic that's two meters long, but it's not convenient to use hydraulics that are short. This is no problem though, we can just make our circle, I mean, square, bigger, until the distance between the two corners is 2 meters, which is the max our hydraulic can move. Conveniently, 2 meters is the longest length of wood we can use. And would you look at that, there is that 1.41 long beam at 45 degrees again. We can just see, based on the shape, that it's the link between the pivot and a corner of our square. No equations needed. Now, you can calculate this link many other ways, like using the quadratic formula or rearranging the sine equation, but why are you bringing harder math into this, you hypothetical individual? We can get away with doing even less math. But first, let's put this into practice. 
Last video, I promised we could lift this car with one hydro. Now, we can do that. We'll start with our special 1.41 link at 45 degrees, as described before. with the hydro, it moves two meters. Nothing special. However, watch what happens when you stack another one of those 1.41 meter linkages onto the end of the first one. We get four meters of movement. If you fill in the rest of the square, it should be easy to see why. We have a square that's 4 meters by 4 meters. The same holds true for a 6 meter by 6 meter square, or a square of any size. This is why we want to use 90 degree rotation. The small 2 meter by 2 meter square will rotate 90 degrees every time. But points farther away have to move a greater distance in the same 90 degrees of rotation. Now that we have the 4 meter movement, all we have to do is connect it to the guiding arm we already have. But let's do even less math. If you split the distance, you have to rotate in half, so that's 4 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters. Copy it, and rotate it 90 degrees, and slap back on the halfway point, you get the center point of the box. It should be easy to see why. We're going up half and over half of the side length of the box. So now that we have the start point, the end point, and the center point, you don't have to do any math at all. We can just get this special link by drawing one meter up, one meter over, and connecting the two points. And yeah, you saw I used it on the four meter square. This even works on a 10 meter square. A square of any size, as long as it is square. Since it's not very budget friendly to build this linkage way away from the part that's being lifted, I'm going to rebuild the linkage lower down using this method. In this rebuild, I'm gonna combine many parts together. Rather than the orange guiding arm rotating at a random point, I'm using the divide in half and rotate method to make sure that when it rotates 90 degrees, it moves up 4 meters. You'll see why in just a moment. I'm repainting the link to be orange to match the previous color scheme. We need two guiding arms, so a quick copy-paste gets that sorted, and now it needs some support to rotate around, so I'm quickly throwing that in. Continuing to follow the color scheme from last time, I've braced the two guiding arms together with the purple and green interlinkage brace, doing a quick up one over one to create the 45 length that will rotate 90 when pulled with a hydro. And this is why I have the guiding arms rotate 90. We can save on space and materials by making the perfect 90 part of the 4 meter lift arm since they both rotate 90 degrees. To highlight things more clearly, I will draw the boxes back in that I was using to rotate around. This is all well and good, but what happens instead of lifting directly up, we have to lift at a weird angle. Let's go over what we do. We have the start point and the end point. 
we can lift any distance, as long as we make it square, that's the right size. So we need to make some kind of square that fits in here, kinda. And we can use the start and end points of a move to find the center of a square. All we have to do now is find the center point of this square. And that is where the tracing tool comes in. If we set the tracing tool to be a straight line versus a curved line, it will evenly split any distance in half when we use the fill tool. Well, we need to decrease the length of material it's putting in. Still not evenly split, so we need to go even shorter. There we go. Now, we have evenly divided this up into even segments. Now we just need to copy and paste to get our center point. Copy, rotate 90 degrees, paste, and here is the center point of our square. So this is where we can make our guiding arm. And we can get rid of all of that. So we know we need two guiding arms. We know we need to brace them together. These need to be supported. And now we just need to power it. Well, let's do one meter up, one meter over, and there's our 45 which I have been, I guess, coloring yellow. We can take that, stick it somewhere in here. Let's, uh, let's put it there. And now we just need to pull this thing with a full length hydraulic. And that should be good to go. You now have a linkage that you can use to beat almost any level. I'll go in and now color in the, uh, the squares so you can see what we're rotating. This is where we get our 90 degree rotation with our 2 meter by 2 meter square. And here is our larger square. It just happens to be rotated at a, at a strange angle. I hope you found this video informative. There are quite a few hydraulic tutorial campaigns in the PolyBridge 2 workshop that you can use to practice your newfound skills on. Look to the comments section for the level codes. But that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one where we start to cover some more of the more complicated and unique linkages. Because rotating 90 degrees is cool and all, but what if you want to rotate double that?